Hi everyone. I hope you're not bored to death. You're not starved yet. So <laughs> I'm standing right here as a part of Jury Online before Jury Offline, and I really hope that you would like my presentation. So, in a few words, you, some of you may found may find our presentation a bit controversial about what we are going to speak of, but trust me, I'll deliver the message as clear as I can. So, first of all, let me give you a few hints on what is Jury Online. We are building Jury Online as, in fact, sorry, the future of digital arbitration. But to start with, we are going to speak about what is on the top of the agenda is ICO. Not ours, but in general. So we figured out the slogan for our Jury Online ICO as the place for responsible ICO. First, my colleagues told me that the slogan should be let's make ICO great again. But still, I'm not wearing that wearing a wig. I don't have an orange tan. So I really hope that you understand that this slogan is, describes the best efficiently what we, are going to do, what we are going to do. So how it works. Jury Online is basically a platform for interaction between investors and the projects with escrow, roadmap, and the most essential part of it, arbitrations. Arbitration of, from the experts, from the famous people in their spheres like fintech, IT, blockchain, and legal. So if you speak about the ICOs, here's where the controversy starts. So basically, there are a few problems that we are facing right now, including lack of communication and trust between the parties. It means it's hard to gain the trust of investors to the ICO. A few fraudulent ICOs that disappeared during or immediately after fundraising stage. We all know Confido, for example. Inadequate sort of hard caps. Sometimes, do you really need $100 billion to do what you need to do? <laughs> Disregard of the established methods and tools of traditional investment. Waste of time on effective marketing means. And so on. I don't want to waste your time. I can explain to you everything, but you can come to me. I'll, I'll give you more inkling. The most important part of it is statistics. Statistics never lie. So according to token data, yeah, sometimes it may lie, but trust me. Yeah. Sorry. All right, yeah. So token data uh, gives us the data that 902 ICOs were held in 2017. 142 projects failed during the crowd sales, crowd sales stage, and 267 immediately declared bankruptcy after launch. It means that 46% of all the companies couldn't get through even the first year of their living, even though they got it more than $104 million. 113 projects have the status of semi-bankrupt due to various reasons. Rounding up, a total of 59% of startups which ran an ICO over the course of 2017 are now on the verge of bankruptcy or fully out of business or have disappeared with the funds. So what is our solution? Our solution is to build ecosystem for interaction between investors and the projects by assistance in logical construction of investment and projects roadmap. And I'm speaking about real, actual business plan. Unconditional financing of the project in case of accurate execution of the roadmap. Sometimes investors are willing to get out. Why? Let's say today, Ether, exchange rate is 300. Tomorrow it's 2,000. You'd better take away your ether and not keep it with the project, and the project will never survive. This, if the project does their work right, they will keep it. Setting the standards of the new way of circuit induction. So we are, yeah, we are speaking about that all the time. Direct communication between investors and the project. Sometimes lack of communication leads to lack of trust lack of and lack of understanding what exactly the project needs to do. And algorithmization of the investment through the smart contract. It means each time the roadmap stage is being achieved, the, there will be the release of the funds and the tokens to the both parties. But if investor is not satisfied with what going on with the project, he may appeal to the arbiters, and the arbiters will resolve, resolve the dispute. 
In one way, they can refund the investor. In the other way, the project may proceed. So we feel that right now the advisors lose, lost their real advisory role. 99%, okay, yeah, once again, this is will lie. 90%, approximately 90% of the advisors right now are only giving their face to the, to the project and nothing else. So we feel that arbiters need to help the projects to build the roadmap, to lead them to the right way. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm still licking the time. So what are the benefits? For investors, it's a secure and simple way of, of investing into ICOs. It's direct communication with the developers throughout the whole course of time. It's adaptability to investor needs. If investor needs something extra, he can arrange it, and it will be written in smart contract. Multi-star funds uh, release based on milestone completion of the project. Clear understanding of what exactly the project wants to achieve. And of course, partial refund. For the project, it's rates of investment att attractiveness. Attraction of the investor from the other ICOs, past and ongoing. Cross-marketing and next publicity for the project. And of course, direct communication with contributors. How it works. Everything goes to the smart contract on the balance. And that, like I said, it's been released upon completion of each stage. Uh, if there is a dispute, it comes to the arbiters. And arbiters resolve. So, so they are one of the driving forces of the whole platform. The main functions of our token are, it's a discounted platform fee, which what it means. It means that actually we are taking the fee for the whole platform, either in Ether or in, in our tokens. Within the course of time, the fee in Ether will rise, while fee in our token will still remain the same. Also, uh, arbiters are rewarded in JOTS, and payments for additional and extra services from our, our potential partners. And that's it, I hope, yeah. If you have any question, feel free, Perfect. I'll give you. Perfect. You exactly Thank fit you. seven minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, right, Peter, please, I invite you to ask yeah. the first question. Thank you. Thank you. Well, first, a comment. I think it's a very relevant uh, topic that you tackle here. And uh, so I agree with everything you have shown on your Thank slides. You despite statistics, of course, lie, but... Statistics um, <laughs> is controversial. That's what I saw because... No, but I think uh, my question is, uh, uh, despite I believe that's meaningful, what is your business model? Uh, you, you explained it briefly that Yeah, you I will, explained briefly because uh, I didn't have but, time. But, but I, uh, why would it be an independent platform and how would you work together with regulators? Because yes. I think that is needed as well. I need to explain that. We are right yeah. now working with... Uh, Rush regulators, we are working with Gibraltar regulators in order to achieve the consent. And also we are on our way approach to South Korea. If they are banned, they are now looking for such solution that may give possibility for the white ICOs to actually exist. So this is our like, first steps that we are working, wor working on, even though we have an ICO right now, but still we need to find something. Our business model is to attract as many projects as we can. So basically we now have, even before we finished our show, we launched the platform, we have two actually projects that we're going around on the B, uh, that are going to be present on the platform. So our target is to attract as many projects as we can in order to build a better world without scam, actually. Yeah. That I sounds I, like a I nice hope. mission. Uh, yes, please, Klaus. Thank you very much. Thank a you. Very important subject. I don't understand sure. how you involve these arbitrary and, yeah. and, and another thing is what metrics are they going to use? Who, who's selecting which I, way? Yeah. I need to, to decide. This. So arbiters, we now have a list of 15 arbiters that are public people from any type, like legal lawyers and, and stuff. I see when it starts, it actually chooses an odd number. So because they vote by majority, so they need three, five, seven, nine, it doesn't matter, they choose. And then each time investor comes to the project, he may change the thir one third of it of them to another. That's making a pool for each investment contract. After that, when it's a roadmap written by the project, they have a certain KPI, which we help and also arbiters help them to set. 
KPI. Yeah, so basically, if we're going to achieve something by 2019, we need to assess this, that in some way. So the milestone, yes. Okay. Yeah. Is there some milestones that actually are being put into blockchain by IPFS or some others, and the, with the timestamp, because they need to seal the milestone before it expires. Otherwise, they will fail. Yeah. There's a process. Yeah. All right, we can take one more question. Any more questions from the jury, from the audience? All right, so we have the question. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, is a, what is a smart contract dispute? Resolution. What do you mean? No. Smart contract dispute? No, it, it says smart contract disputes can be more easily and quickly settled. I, I thought that smart contracts are to avoid disputes, no? <laughs> Sometimes interaction between people will cause the dispute. Any each time when two people interact, there may be a dispute. Doesn't matter what the deal is. It is either it is in a smart contract or it's just usual deal. There may be a dispute, so there needs some some way to resolve this dispute, either for the trusted people or for anonymous. And we are given both solutions actually. But this is a long-term plan. It's like the general concept. But for now, we are trying to concentrate on ICO dispute resolution. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Valeria. Thank you for the presentation.